So I just recognized I didn't have my microphone, so I'm reshooting this. Went through all the grits. Uh, you can buy the one. I'm sorry, the 150 grit. You can buy that separate rolls and reinsert it in there because you'll run out this one first, this one next. You'll always have these left over since you use smaller and smaller pieces as you go because you don't need to sand as much. You just want to get the scratches out from the previous grip. Again, I put a, right as soon as I finish this now, the dust collector's off because I'm going to do wet sanding. I got a little plastic coated piece of cardboard. It's got a little notch cut out. fits nice around here. It protects the lathe. I use that when I, when I um, do super glue finish for wood. Again, for acrylics you don't need super glue. But for wood, when I do that, I'll protect my lathe here. So now I'm going to use a thousand grit and then I'll go to the micro mesh. I have a separate thousand grit that's not part of the micro mesh. So the micro mesh has the grits here. I'm going to go through progressively and you just keep a stack of them and I keep a little pail of water, dip them in real quick and go through the sanding. Looks like it goes from 1500 down to 12,000. Then I'm going to use a liquid polish. Just progressively getting out the scratches from the previous piece, basically. And it doesn't take very long, just real quick, I'll show you. So let me get my water a little closer here. It's on a separate workbench. Start with the brown side. Whoops. Just drop the last one, the blue one. Okay. So start with the brown. Just want to make sure you cover all your areas here. The older sandpapers. They used to say you had to clean off in between each grit, take a paper towel or whatever and get in case it left over little pieces of sandpaper grit. But the newer sandpapers, you don't really need to do that. They hold on to their grit real well. They're not leaving a lot on the material. So a lot of people that kind of wipe off between every grit, I've never found that to be a problem. And as you'll see, this will turn out quite uh, nicely polished toward the end and it'll be shiny as you can get it or you would want it. I do use a high gloss. You can use a satin liquid polish at the very end too to, if you don't like it as shiny. I, I again like my pen shiny. I like my furniture satin. I don't like it too glossy on the furniture or the wood, but on the pens I think a high gloss is good even on the wood. The super glue you kind of when you get down to this stage it's very similar to the to the acrylic once you've gotten the super glue built up on there you'll be going through this but that's a different video for a different time all right so I'm down to the last sanding step now I'm gonna use some of this uh, liquid polish on a little paper towel and uh, shake it up a little bit first and put a little doesn't need too much I give it a little dab there back and forth and then I'm going to really polish, turn the RPMs up and go for a dry piece here. Got some black metal residue on there. Now we'll take a look at that. So I've just finished the liquid polish and I don't know if you can make out the translucence of that. It's actually even better in person than the actual, it's got some purple on this. This is uh, again called a peacock blank and it's got purple on one side and a little green and blue on the other side, very translucent. Can't make it down the tube. I've had blanks, lighter colors and things where you can actually see the the brass tube all the way down that deep. But it's a beautiful blank. I like it a lot. It's close to the Wabali green for one of my favorites. One of my new favorites. You know how it changes with pins. So the next thing will be pressing the parts together from the pin kit. I'm going to do that tomorrow because it's already after 11 o'clock p.m. here. And... Uh, there's always, you can always mess it up, even down to the very last step. There is a type of paper towel I like. It's this, uh, um, it's called Vita. It's a lot smoother. It's not like real gritty like this. This stuff is gritty. This, this stuff is a lot finer. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I always like that type better. So I've just finished the liquid polish. And I don't know if you can make out the translucence of that. It's actually even better in person than the actual. It's got some purple on this. This is uh, 
again called a peacock blank and it's got purple on one side and a little green and blue on the other side very translucent can't make it down the tube I've had blanks lighter colors and things where you can actually see the the brass tube all the way down that deep but it's a beautiful blank I like it a lot it's close to the Wabali green for one of my favorites one of my new favorites you know how it changes with pins so the next thing will be pressing the parts together from the pin kit I'm gonna do that tomorrow because it's already after 11 o'clock p.m. here and uh, there's always you can always mess it up even down to the very last step there is a type of paper towel I like it's this uh, um, it's called Vita it's a lot smoother it's not like real gritty like this this stuff is gritty this this stuff is a lot finer I don't know if it makes a difference but I always like that type better here's just another close-up of the the um, translucence of this peacock acrylic acrylester acrylic pen there's pluses to uh, acrylics and negatives compared to wood I mean but they're a lot easier to finish than wood I'll tell you that they're tougher to turn you got to take really small slices I put a little body in my pen I don't know if you can see it right in this area I like to put a little taper down here the last part and then a little indentation in here for the uh, I don't know if you can see that for the hand for the grip on it but uh, we'll show it the rest of the pen when I get it pressed together okay so now I'm gonna take the uh, blank off and the pin blank or the turn to pin and I think it's important to always put it in the order uh, that you had it on so you know which end to put what piece into because believe me you can end up putting them in the wrong end so I like to even lay my bushings out in order for the next pin keep keep the uh, the cap at the top and the base at the bottom got my two middle bushings I'll just leave my end bushing on there and then we'll get ready to press the parts together so I'm about ready to put the parts together here I got these uh, ultra cigar pin kits from online from a place called Crooked Mill but uh, also Woodcraft sells them and I've turned them from both I just was you know a little bit less expensive I think there was three pin kits for $29 online versus 15 per piece to the Woodcraft ones but I've used both they're similar but not exactly alike. The tubes are the same size. You can intermix those. Uh, the instructions are a little bit different. I think the uh, connector piece for the turning mechanism is a little bit different. So this one starts out. They put the uh, tip in it. Again, it's a little bit different than the Woodcraft instructions. Now, when you're pressing these together... It can come out at an angle, and if it does, I'll go to my workbench and put it between two jaws of the workbench and get it better than this press. Because I have chipped out pins before by pushing it on wrong. Like if the lip here comes down at an angle, it might contact one side first. This acrylic, again, is a little bit fragile. I mean, once it's put together, I haven't had a problem. So... This piece I found is the toughest piece, this connector, to put in. It does likes to go in at an angle, and I'll use my bench vise if I need to for that. We'll see how it does here. I noticed over time that my pin press here, the, the angle starts to ride up, and I've had to push it back down. It means it's a little flexible. It's not the highest quality one, I suppose. That went in nice. So now I'm going to... I switch out my refills the refill that comes with it as you see I got a bunch in a bag to take my office and use but the refill that comes with it is usually poor quality it doesn't last long so I always most of these are gifts I give away so I always put in a different kind of refill I buy a Parker or for a while there's some fray ones they're pretty standard you can get them at office depot or staples and there's a uh, the turning mechanism just screws on there I was worried this could become unscrewed at some point by just turning the pin because it's the same direction to unscrew it as when you turn the turning mechanism. 
always want to check the point, make sure it goes in and out, and it's about the right out mechanism. That's a, that's a good point there. It's not too far out, not too far in. If it was, you could take it, but you could punch these parts back out and uh, sand off that end by just running it on a piece of hard sandpaper, which I've done to make it a little bit shorter. Not the ideal way to do it. So next I would take it will be this ring here. And so we'll readjust. So far it's been squeezing together fine. Go slow. Sometimes I'll give it a little turn, make sure it's on there tight. And then the last one, the cap. When you want to pick where to put the clip, you want to hide the worst part of the pin blank or the least interesting part with the clip. So I'm kind of looking around. I got a nice purple on one side here. I don't know if you can see that. And then I've got a nice figure all the way around. But I'll pick a spot that's not as visually interesting, which is kind of tough on this blank. It's such a nice blank. Probably right in this area. And bring the clip down on that side. And we'll go ahead and press that. Now the kits that come from Woodcraft are a little different on this part. On this part, this this separates the cap from the rest of the clip, and I actually will put the cap on first, and then push it down with the cap on so I don't go too far, and then unscrew it, unlike the instructions that say just push it on without the cap on it. So now I'm going to line up the two halves, and again, I want to line up the colors so they match. you got purple on one side, purple on one side here, and then you've got the green and blue on the other side so when I push it together they'll match at least I guess and we'll try it one more time turning mechanism turns it's a little tight it turns there works I'm sorry it turns right there so that's the uh, peacock acrylester acrylic very brittle but a beautiful pen nice translucence I think they call it pearl translucence like pearly material and uh I think there's one last thing I'm going to show you, and that's a, in case you screw up at some point, you need to punch out the parts or put a new parts. So at some point, if your mechanism fails, maybe the click mechanism wears out over time, you want to change the parts out, or if something just didn't quite work, maybe you got the top of one half of one, a different one, you got something went in and broke, or whatever, you can use knockout bars. This set of knockout bars is well worth the cost. And what you do for that is you take two halves of pin apart, unscrew everything you can, and then to get the pieces that you just pressed in, you run this knockout bar. I run it in kind of an angle and just hold up my hand, take a hammer and just tap it lightly a few times and I'll usually pop out the end piece and so you can start again. That's just in case there's a mess up. So again, that's the uh, Peacock Acrylester Acrylic. Probably should do better lighting. Let's see if I can get that a little closer for you. And that's the Ultra Cigar Pin Kit. It's kind of a big pin, a very weighty, beefy pin. I personally like to use click pins, but I can't find good mechanisms. But I, that's usually the kind that I carry every day is ones with click mechanisms. So you can do one-handed work instead of having two hands for turning. But these look a lot better than the click ones, and they last a lot longer. There's another point, just when I thought I was done. This little piece of wood I made, drill a little hole in there, and it's got a little bit of taper to it. Maybe use a tapering bit. And I use that, like if I need to put it in the vise clamp on the bench, and I don't want, and I want to push the two parts together, I'll put the tip in there, but I really use it for the click pins to put the end of the click in there so I don't damage it when I'm pressing the parts together. That's something you might want to just make up. So I tried to get a little better lighting here. To show you this pin, but it's really not going to do it justice on camera. Here you really can't see the three-dimensional aspect to the translucent acrylester acrylic.